Um, okay, hi everybody, my name is Scott Shuby. I work for Intel, and um, because Intel's a big company, I'll just be more specific. I work for the part of Intel that actually produces and manufactures and ships optics, so optical transceivers and optical uh, integrated circuits. Um, so the silicon photonics technology that Intel has developed can be used for highly integrated optics, co-packaged optics, and you know, that some of the other speakers have talked about earlier today. Um, but today I'm gonna focus more on what's being deployed today in volume in the highest end data centers um, and make a tie back to some of the work that's gone on within OCP specific to optics and optics specifications. So that's namely 200 gigabit per second and, and I'll just in keeping with the theme, I'm talking about gigabits per second everywhere through my presentation when I say G. Um, uh, 200 gigabit per second and 400 gigabit per second um, uh, FR4 OCP optics using silicon photonics or focusing in on silicon photonics. Okay. All right, so a little bit of background. Um, so in the industry in general, every generation of new speeds and feeds, the industry gets together and defines for optics optical interface specifications. And the reason for that is to make sure that all the optics and all the equipment can talk to each other. And so these are done in a variety of different places. This could be done in the IEEE uh, many times. It's done in various industry multi-source uh, agreement groups where various industry participants get together and, and voluntarily define, co-define optical specifications um, to ensure that everybody interoperates and talks to each other. Um, so within the OCP, uh, Meta has contributed a few specifications around optics. Um, so notably around 100 gig CWM4 optics, 200 gig FR4 optics, and 400 gig FR4 optics. Um, so those optical interfaces have OCP variations of the spec. And in the last slide, uh, there's a, I've got some links in there if, if anybody's interested in going and navigating to those specs and seeing where they, um, where they sit on the OCP site and getting more details. Um, so uh, OCP variants are in many ways similar to some of the other variants that might be defined in the IEEE, but have certain differences. For instance, just to give a few examples, temperature range is often, um, depending on the OCP spec, uh, narrower than, um, than for a uh, typical non-OCP spec, uh, uh, particularly at the cold end, data centers run hot. Um, and then the optical wavelength range is correspondingly smaller as well, just because for uncooled optical transmitters, the wavelength drifts over temperature, so the smaller the range, the smaller the drift you need to allow. Um, and then for, depending on the OCP uh, spec, so for instance, 100 gig uh, CWM4 OCP spec has a reach of 500 meters versus um, the non-OCP uh, uh, MSA spec of two kilometers. Um, and it's not specifically called out in the OCP specs, but um, I'll just call it here as a key requirement for many uh, data center customers is backwards compatibility. So having the, for instance, 400 gig optics be able to run at half rate as, at 200 gig um, at, or 50 gig per lane or at, um, at, at a quarter rate at 100 gig as well. Um, and that's basically for to allow for easier bandwidth upgrade paths in, in deployment. Um, and so, uh, so, yeah, so these optics are optical, go in optical transceivers, as shown here down at the bottom, with colorful pull tabs of various kinds, and then they get plugged into networking equipment of various kinds. And so these are just a few examples um, that have been shown publicly, in, including in, in OCP. So the Meta, Meta Mini Pack 2, an Arista switch that's also a 25T switch, and then, um, and then an Edge Core 12.8T um, switch. And these are just a few examples. There's others, uh, many networking equipment uh, customers are, and, and, and companies are making and even some showing on the show floor right now. Okay, so now zeroing in on implementation of these types of optics, uh, a little bit of just a very high level background in, in Intel silicon photonics and silicon photonics in general. Uh, the basic idea behind silicon photonics is to make optics look more like mainstream semiconductors in the sense of manufacturability and scalability and repeatability. Um, uh, and how we do that is by integrating num a number of different optical functions monolithically onto, uh, onto a single chip or as few chips as possible. And so these might be optical functions like modulators, detectors, waveguides, output coupling features, multiplexers, demultiplexers, all integrating all of that into, um, into um, a single silicon uh, uh, IC or a, a photonic IC or PIC. 
Um, so in Intel Silicon Photonics, we also integrate the laser itself into the PIC as well. Um, there's other implementations that have the laser separate. Um, so this integration has advantages, um, as shown here on the right. So again, implementations vary, um, but directionally, um, a traditional type of approach, what I'll call here, is has a lot of uh, different discrete components inside, whether it be you know, lenses and optical multiplexer chips and monitor photodiodes, all as separate chips, and then are connected together cleverly with a bunch of micro optics and lenses and sub mounts and what have you. And so the equivalent of that 100 gig optical transmitter sh with silicon photonics is shown on the right. So everything's integrated into that chip. All, 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 in this case, it's you know four. Four lasers, four modulators, optical multiplexer, monitor, monitoring circuits, et cetera. And so there's fewer, uh, fewer alignment steps, fewer assembly steps, et cetera. Um, okay, so now going into a, an optical transceiver, the, the product that would um, go, in, go plug into these switches using silicon photonics. So again, OCP optics can be implemented using a variety of technologies, and there's a bunch of vendors that are, are, uh, and, uh, are producing uh, 200 gig and 400 gig OCP optics. This is showing a silicon photonics implementation, uh, specifically a 200 gig FR4 optical transceiver. Um, so you can see inside there's a lot of empty space on the board, and that's because things are integrated together. So um, on the transmit side, uh, it's a 4 by 50 gig PAM4 um, optical transmitter. And on that pic that's shown here, there in the middle, there's integrated, again, uh, four lasers. The lasers are integrated. The optical multiplexer is integrated. Um, et cetera. In fact, I think I've got a little build here that shows that. So these are some of the things that are all integrated into a single pick. And then on the receive side, you've got an RX, a small RX pick here, which is a silicon photonics photo detector array in the middle here. Um, this TIA is an electrical IC that sits next to it and as, acts as a post amplifier. Um, there's a DMUX, and in this implementation, the DMUX is separate. It's a separate PLC DMUX, but there's other implementations or, or, or products that, have, uh, that may have integrated DMUX and, and RX as well. And then this DSP or CDR chip is an electrical IC, which would be common across uh, uh, optics implementations in general. Okay. Um, Okay, so, so there's a few design challenges for these high-speed optics. So the first one is obviously performance. So these are getting to pretty high speeds. So um, 50 gig gigabits per second per lane or 100 gigabits per second per lane. Um, and so having that high-speed optoelectronic device performance is the foundation of it, but also designed for good signal integrity um, throughout the whole product. And so this is just some performance data that's you know examples of what types of things that optical uh, transceiver vendors, including Intel, would test, uh, test for to ensure performance. And so these are validated against OCP specs, for instance, uh, you know, uh, 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 optical output power to make sure it's high enough, uh, optical waveform quality to make sure it's, it's good enough as well. And so these are just some examples. And testing over temperature and testing over various channels. And this is, this is for 400 gig FR4 optical transceivers, just a, a batch of 100, just to give an example. Um, so another design challenge for these high-speed optics is reliability. So in general, product reliability is needed to avoid network downtime, operational costs for field replacements, et cetera. And this is especially true in larger scale deployments. So if you have a 1% failure and you're only deploying 100 transceivers, that's only one you need to replace. And obviously, it scales up when you have 100,000 or a million transceivers. Um, and so. Um, you know, we, we and, and others characterize our optics uh, over multiple stresses, um, uh, bell core tests and what have you. This might be stressing over temperature, stressing over humidity, stressing over ESD um, before shipment, uh, before they go into production to ensure that they're reliable. And so um, specifically for silicon photonics, um, we've, we've gotten excellent reliability um, data back from the field. So this is showing um, some testing that we've done uh, accelerated aging on our laser um, over what's equivalent to 15 years at ADC uh, laser operation. But the data we've gotten back from the field, um, we've, we've gotten you know, what we'd consider best in class reliability data back from the field, where the wear out failures are really just negligible at over 10 years lifetime. And the field data showing uh, the, for the laser, uh, in particular the integrated laser for silicon photonics, is showing laser failure rates of, of less than two fit. All right, um, then, the, then the third one I'll just highlight here is high volume manufacturing. So everything's got, making one of something is typically uh, maybe not easy, but it's, it's um, a whole lot easier than making uh, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of them. So, um, so to, in, in our case at Intel, we make all of our optics on 12-inch CMOS wafers at Intel Fab, so some of the same fabs that make CPUs and other Intel products, and you're trying to use as much of that infrastructure and process as possible. 
Um, and on the back, and so this is a picture from our wafer fab in uh, Rio Rancho, New Mexico, near Albuquerque, where we make uh, where we make optical chips. Um, and then our back end manufacturing on the module side, we try to automate as much as possible. So things like die attach and wire bond, PCB singulation, um, et cetera, are all automated to the extent possible. And uh, and and just measuring measuring reliability and performance at every step of the way. So anyway, so that's you know at a high level, these challenges have been met. We've shipped millions of 100 gig CWM4 OCP optics um, to a number of different customers. And we're shipping 200 gig and 400 gig OCP optics at, an, at a, quite a big annual run rate already and still ramping. And this is all based on the same basic silicon photonics integrated technology platform. Um, okay, what's next? Um, 200 gig and 400 gig OCP optics are just being deployed in volume and are expected to continue to ramp um, for the next couple of years. Um, and then as bandwidth needs and continue to grow, the industry is working on uh, even higher bandwidth optics. So one would be basically leveraging the OCP optics, the 400 gig OCP optics that are, that are specified now and putting two of them in the same package. So you know, dou double the density in, uh, in the same form factor. So two by 400 gig FR4 OCP optics is that, is that example. And then further on, as other speakers have talked about, the industry's already working on 200 gig per lane optics for um, targeted at 1.6 T. So eight by 200 gig PAM4. Um, I was uh, a, a little bit depressed to hear that the form factor debates will continue at this uh, at this uh, speed, but um, um, but uh, it'll be OSFP XD or OSFP 1600 or something else um, for um, eight by 200 gig optics. And so for those 1.60 optics, there's work in the IEEE right now to define standards, and I think there's scope for work in the OCP as well to if not create, you know, create an, a, a separate OCP variant, at least, uh, you know, a kind of a derivative variant um, that's targeted at, at data center customers, and I imagine that will happen. Um, okay, so uh, I'll end with just, you know, we're shipping OCP optics now. These are, these are what they look like, um, again, with silicon photonics uh, chips inside. And then on the uh, on on this link, and again, the slides will be distributed later. Um, but the 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 actual specs that were contributed by Meta to the OCP are listed at the top. Um, you can find Intel OCP Optics as the links in the middle. And if you want to get involved, you know, there's work going on um, uh, on next generation optics in the IEEE, in the OSFP MSA, and and other industry groups. And you can always e uh, email me um, if you have any questions or comments or feedback. All right. Thanks.